Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to use a USB stick to flash an updated BIOS on your MSI B450M Mortar Max motherboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to update the BIOS on our MSI B450M Mortar Max motherboard without a CPU attached. So if you bought this board and you're planning to update it to maybe a 5000 series processor and the board isn't ready out of the box, then you'll need to perform a BIOS flash before your system will work. So what you're gonna need for this is obviously your motherboard itself. You'll need something to put it on, table, or maybe use the box that the motherboard actually came in. You'll need a USB stick, which will be formatted to FAT32 and needs to be over 32 gigabytes or less. You will also need a power supply with two connectors on, one of which is the EPS connector for your motherboard, which goes in the top left-hand corner, and also you will need the 24-pin main power connector, which fits on the side of the motherboard. You will also need a PC or some kind of device to actually connect to the internet to go to MSI's website, and the device will need a USB port, so you can transfer the BIOS from the machine you've downloaded it to onto our USB stick, and also to rename the BIOS file. So once you've got all those things ready, Let's get into it. So the first thing you want to do is to head over to the MSI website. Links of all this will be in the video description below, so you can click on those if you wish. It's msi.com forward slash motherboard forward slash support, then your motherboard name. So normally you'd go to the first page, which is the overview page, which is here. And if you scroll down through, just do a quick visual check, make sure it is the, uh, the motherboard that you've got. Once you're happy, then head over to the support tab up on the top right hand side, and then go into BIOS, which Unfortunately, this goes straight into anyway. So if you go into BIOS, it gives you the list of all the BIOSes which are available, and there has been quite a few. This board has been out a little while now. I would suggest, depending on your system and your needs, I would probably go for the one below the very latest. That is a little bit risky in some cases, especially with some of these B450 boards as they are kind of like a beta BIOS. So I would go for the one before that. So we're gonna go with this one, which is version 2C, which was released back in 2021 towards the beginning of the year. So this updates the AGISA code, etc., etc. Obviously, depending on what processor you're using, you may need to update your AGISA to a slightly higher level, but this should be absolutely fine. So click on the download icon on the side there, and then choose a location to actually save it to. So we're just gonna save it to the desktop, we'll click on save, and then we can minimize this window. Next, we're gonna insert our USB stick into one of the ports on the PC and the drive comes up as being empty. So that's excellent. But what we'll do is we'll format it anyway. This is good practice. So right click on the USB drive and choose format. And in this section here, just make sure that it says FAT32 and the default allocation size and the volume label, leave that blank. If there's anything in here, just remove it. Once you're happy, click on start and you'll come up with a message saying this will erase all data. So obviously make sure it's a drive that you can erase all data, otherwise grab another one. When you're happy, click OK. And then wait for the format complete and click OK. So that is our drive ready and waiting. So all we need to do now is to extract the BIOS file. So our BIOS file is here on the desktop in a WinRAR folder. Yours may well be just a zip folder, depending on what software you have installed on your PC. Right click on the file and choose extract all and go through the extraction process. Then you'll come up with a folder which will have the BIOS files inside it. So you've got a text file and also the BIOS file. So what we need to do is to actually rename this BIOS file so it's in a format that our motherboard can actually recognize. Make sure when you're doing this that you have got the option to show hidden files and show file extensions enabled so you can actually see the extension on the end there. Once you're happy, click on the file and then we can rename it. So we have to rename this to MSI, then a full stop, then ROM, and then hit enter. You'll get a message saying that the file name extension may be unusable. Do you want to change it? And yes, we do. Once the file's been renamed, then all we need to do is to drag it onto our USB drive which is down here. And once we're happy that the BIOS file is actually on the USB stick, we can then eject the drive. So the next part of the process is to actually flash the BIOS. So what we're gonna do is set up our test bench setup. 
So grab your motherboard, put it onto something which you can support it on. So we're just going to use the motherboard box here and get your USB stick and put it into the USB flash port. Now, if you haven't seen it already on the motherboard, you've got a little flashback button there and next to it is the BIOS flashback port. If you're not sure which one it is, if you take a look at the IO shield for the motherboard, you'll see that it's highlighted in white actually on the shield, which one is the BIOS flash port. When you're happy, put the drive into the USB port. Next, we need to connect up our power supply. So we've got a, a pretty standard power supply here. So we're gonna go ahead and install the two main cables, one of which is the 24 pin, which will go into the motherboard on the side. And also we've got the EPS connector or four or eight pin connector, which is your additional CPU power connection, which is in the top left-hand corner of your motherboard. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna press the button on the back of the motherboard there for about two seconds, just press and hold it, then release it. We should find then that the LED on the back of the motherboard should start flashing. Then when the BIOS is actually being read, it will flash a little bit quicker or a little bit slower, depending on your version of the board. If for some reason you press and hold the button and it either is a solid light or it flashes briefly for three or four times and then stops, what you've done is you've actually not put the BIOS file on correctly or it is a USB stick that the motherboard cannot recognize. At this point, it's a good idea to try another USB stick and go through the process again. So this is our motherboard ready, got a close up so you can see what's going on. So we've got our BIOS button on the end there and all we need to do is press and hold that for the count of two and then release. So one, two and release. Now there may be a slight delay, just give it a few seconds and we'll wait for the motherboard to flash a couple of times. You'll see in the background here, the uh, RGBs come on the side of the board and you can see the LED is flashing rapidly next to the BIOS flashback button. So at this point, all we need to do is just uh, sit and wait and let it get on and do its thing. You may see actually in the top corner of the board, there is some diagnostic LEDs at the top here, which will just be illuminated on the CPU LED. But yeah, just be patient, let it do its thing. So the, uh, the speed of the LED will start flashing a different speed. Sometimes it speeds up, sometimes it slows down. Your board may vary but we are looking for a difference. So what this is essentially doing now is transferring the BIOS from the USB stick into the kind of memory of the system. That is one speed of flash. Once that is done, there'll be a brief pause and then the flashing will change speed and that is the BIOS actually being programmed. So we'll leave that to do its thing and we'll come back when we're ready. And there we go, after a few minutes, now we've got the rapid flashing LED. So that means the BIOS is now being programmed. Again, don't touch anything, don't do anything, just leave it to do what it needs to do and wait for the LED to change status. When the LED has gone out, you may find that your motherboard either powers down, some cases it will, some cases it won't, depending on which BIOS you're updating. But as long as the USB is finished flashing, then we're all good so we can power down the machine just turn off the power supply and then we can get on to build our system. So that is essentially it. We've powered down the system, so all you need to do is remove your USB stick, disconnect everything and get on with building your system. It would be a good idea at this point if you can, build a little test bench system up, put your processor on, put some RAM in, start with limited peripherals, maybe graphics card if you need it, and just make sure that it boots, goes into the BIOS screen, that kind of thing. If you get any problems or you have any questions, we've got a Discord chat, which you're more than welcome to join, or just let us know in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So this has been how to use the USB flashback method for our MSI B450M Mortar Max. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.